Hey everyone, you are at the Chaos Weekly Community Meeting. How's everybody doing today? I hope everyone's doing all right. It's November 8th. It is also election day in the US. So if you are in the US, please vote. That would be amazing. Um, even though I know it's a pain here in Ohio, we get absolutely bombarded, bombarded with political stuff because Ohio is a swing state. So yeah, I think I've gotten maybe 15 phone calls between yesterday and today, people reminding you to vote, emails, just, I, yeah, so please vote. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, the minutes are in the chat. Um, I don't think anybody new has joined since then, since I just dropped them in, but I'll just drop them in one more time. What the heck? Um, also a reminder, this is a meeting that is um, counted under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so please be kind. We would appreciate that. Um, we do have two Sophias again. Are they are they actually two Sophias or is it still you? Just you, Sophia. All right. <laughs> You're so awesome. You just take up two spots. That's how awesome you are. <laughs> uh, okay. So first, oh, I should share. We'll do that. So the first thing on the agenda, if you would not mind adding your name as an attendee and answering how many cities you've lived in. Uh, Venya has been around four cities, um, three. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm so boring. I've, I've lived in a bunch of houses just all in the same area. So I'm that person that never leaves home. <laughs> I never leave my house if I can help it. <laughs> so yeah. If you wanna, if you wanna add your name and tell us how, uh, how many cities you've lived in and which one's your favorite, that'd be great. Um, this is a reminder. I, I'm so sorry. We tried to remind everybody in Slack that's also going on this week as this time change, which has everything screwed up. Um, if you are in a city that does not observe daylight savings time, then you're probably not even really sure what time anything is in the US. Um, I don't blame you. We don't know either. Um, but just check your calendars. That's just a reminder, check your calendars. Um, so if you have not observed daylight saving time, chaos meetings are an hour earlier for you. So that might mess up your schedule. And if we need to adjust some things, um, I'm looking at you, Ruth, for Chaos Africa. If we need to adjust some things to make it easier for your community, um, we can do that if you like, like, cause I know it's an hour earlier for your whole community. So um, yeah. if you want to put it back to where it was. Actually. It's an hour later, Elizabeth. An hour later? Yeah, for us. <laughs> that was an hour earlier. Okay, well, I'm gonna change this. See, I don't even know how to do math. I don't even know what day it is. What's happening? I don't know. Time <laughs> is a just human construct anyway. Um, yeah, it's like when, when you have like an hour earlier, it's later our time because we don't observe it. So it's like later our time. So you're yeah. going back, you're going forward. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have the same problem in spring, just so you know, unless we vote to not do it, but we probably will just do it because that's what we always do. Um, so do you want to change it on the calendar to be where it was, Ruth? No, I, th I, think, I think it's okay because it doesn't really affect Chaos Africa meetings, right? It's just the same time. It doesn't affect our own meetings. So, but like an hour, an hour later for us is fine, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, just whatever you need to do with it. If you need to change the calendar, whatever, you know, you know, whatever you need to do is totally fine. Just let me know if I can help you make that easier for that, for your community. Cause yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, let's go on to discourse. Um, so, we're really wanting to use discourse for some things and um, we've not moved this really forward. It's it's gonna be kind of a project, I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna be a project. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and head this up I because I really want it to happen. And I know that um, it will be extremely helpful for, especially for Ruth and Chaos Africa folks, because I know she's wanting to do some things, but we need discourse really to do that. So um, yeah, we're gonna move forward. So if you are interested in working on this, um, please reach out to me. There's a, um, a Slack channel I can add you to. And we've had some initial conversations that, that have been going on for like six months, um, but we just haven't had any momentum to kind of move it actually forward. <laughs> um, we were thinking of doing it in the first of the year, but I would really like to start the process anyway before then. 
um, just because it is kind of holding up some things. So um, yeah, if you are interested in participating in that or helping out with that project, let me know and I'll add you to the list of, or add you to the um, Slack channel and we can get a planning sesh going and get some, get some movement on that. Do people have questions about that? Do you under, does it, should I give some context around what that is? Do people need that? I think my question is if we are found, like I know there was like a running instance, but have we found the link to the running instance? No, <laughs> we haven't. Because <laughs> um, I, I think the people who know that information have been super busy and kind of out of pocket. Um, so that's part of the like, I was thinking of having this like a kickoff, okay we're doing this thing now and like tying up all those loose ends all the things we started and didn't finish all those discussions where we just kind of left it hanging because we couldn't decide like let's bring these to fruition and let's move this forward let's just decide okay so i think that will be part of that and i'll just keep i'll just keep harassing people until they get, until they give us the information we need i'm just kidding i'm not harassing anyone um i will keep asking them nicely and politely because that's what I do. So um, yes. Uh, so yeah, in answer to your question, there are some things that we need to, some pieces we need to put together again and some some things we need to fill in, some gaps. So yeah, if you're interested in this, um, just for those who don't know to um, anyone new to the community, right now we're using Slack obviously and mailing list. Um, the mailing lists are super old school. They're not very intuitive for newcomers. Um, it's not even clear like how to post to them or like, how to use them. Um, and it's also extremely hard to find old conversations, although they're there, they're saved, which is different than Slack. Slack, we don't have the pay plan, we are on the free plan. So things in Slack will get um, deleted after six months or whatever it is. So it's not great for like historical conversations or like that historical knowledge of why did we decide something or what was that conversation about? So that's kind of been the push to discourse um, to replace the mailing list. We will not replace Slack because we are still actively using that. That's like kind of our central thing now um, for those quick in, or you know quick async conversations. But for like longer term conversations or longer term discussions or being able to find things a little easier, that's what we're going to use discourse for. So it's going to replace the mailing list and for announcements and things like that. I mean, this has been an ongoing conversation um, just because it's it is going to take a little bit of work to do that. Um, so it's been just kind of hanging out there <laughs> for a while. So um, hopefully we can bring that to fruition and actually make it happen, because I think it will free us up to do a lot of things that we are kind of limited on right now. Does anyone have questions about this? Yeah, so Hi. Venya says, oh, go ahead, Venya, yeah. I texted a little bit more about my opinion in the chat, but overall, I think I am absolutely for it, especially with the communications working group trying to put a lot more out there. Um, I think it'll really help with SEO. Yeah, agreed. It will definitely help with just like the discoverability and findability and I think accessibility too, because like right now the mailing list just doesn't quite um, it's just not quite there. It's it's pretty old school. So, yeah. All right. So if you are interested in that again, just reach out to me on Slack or email, whatever. Um, I'll put that in here. Here's my email. There we go. Or on Slack. All right. Um, okay. So, any other questions? Can we make this a communication um, group thing too? Yeah. Sure. Of course. Yeah, because I feel like it would it would definitely fit in with that group, um, especially when it comes to dissemination and public information. Yeah. Sounds great. Maybe we have some folks in there who are interested in helping that with that. Um, okay. Anything else on that before I move on? I don't mean to cut that short. Okay, all right, we'll move on. Um, okay, so the next one came up from the OSPO working group. 
So in that working group, it, we kind of decided to take away focus areas, which is a really big change from the way our working groups have been thus far. Um, it just, they just didn't fit. They just didn't fit anymore. And so um, it, it was making things more complicated than they needed to be. So in the spreadsheet, this is our, for those who don't know, this is our giant spreadsheet of all of the metrics and all of the ideas and all of the things in progress. Um, and it's at the top of every working group meeting agenda, if you ever want to find this worksheet or the spreadsheet. Um, and here at the bottom, we have all of the different working groups and what they're working on. So you can see we right now still have focus, focus areas like people, contributions, time, place. Um, those are mostly for our benefit um, when we're trying to organize this giant mass of, of work of metrics. So we decided in the, um, <laughs> the OSFA working group that these things, the, the focus groups we had just didn't, or focus areas we had just didn't really quite fit anymore. And it just was a lot harder to see what was being worked on and to see where things were. So we decided to take them out. Um, but I don't know if like, can we do that? Do we care? Is that okay with the community? Is it, you know, bad? Ruth, go ahead. Yeah, so my question is like, is it just for the OSPO working group or like for the entire chaos? That's a really good question. And that's kind of why we decided to bring it to the community meeting. Um, because the way the new, the way the new website will present the metrics, the focus areas are really kind of a thing of the past. Like it won't show up anywhere, I don't believe, in the front facing website anymore. So instead of this giant, here I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. So instead of this that's not I think that valuable actually, because like it's in the metrics I lot. So when whenever I look at those focus areas, I can like it's more arranged in my head, right? Like than seeing all the metrics all listed out. Like I know like coming from the perspective of um, a community trying to understand what chaos is doing and how to use chaos metrics. Mm -hmm. When I look at the focus areas, I know if my problem is trying to measure contributions, I know the different metrics um, I need to, you know, look at. But if we just have like, that whole list there it might it might be hard personally the focus area has helped me understand how the metrics you know are used so I think it's something we might want to keep and then for the OSPO if we want to since the um, value working group came to the OSPO we might want to we think our uh, focus areas are okay, like for the value, the OSPO working group now and think about how, um, what are the focus areas for an OSPO and then go with that. I definitely agree. Um, I also wonder if the reason we're running into this problem isn't because it's not useful, but more because we've outgrown the infrastructure that we've developed. And it's time for us to upgrade that Excel spreadsheet to an active database. And a big part of that would also be changing it on the front end uh, website, uh, wherein the focus should be mostly on the after state and what the metric can provide to a community, as opposed to just metric name, metric definition. Um, I think that that particular column could provide some insight and development on that as well. Um, I just wonder if we may have outgrown it. Excellent yeah, points. Go I'm ahead, Anita. Also wondering why are we um, removing, the, um, what is the reason though for removing the focus areas? Maybe if we understand the reason, then we can know if we should look for a better way to like categorize it, just like um, um, Venia said, categorize it so that it looks a lot more understandable because so many people use those focus areas to understand what is going on in the metrics. Sorry, Anita, I, I muted you on accident. I'm sorry. 
Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, so I said a lot of persons actually um, use the um, focus areas to understand what part of the metrics they want to gain more insight on ticket. So like, um, I just want to know, like, why are we removing the focus areas? Is it that it's not organized again, or we no longer need the focus areas? Okay, so um, to address Venya's comments and Ruth's comments and Anita's comments, so the new um, way that metrics will be displayed, we're, we're getting rid of this page completely. This page will no longer exist. Um, we are displaying them in the knowledge base. So people, they are in groups, um, but they're not in what we have now as focus areas. And I wish I had a link to the new thing so you all could see what that's going to look like but i don't think i do um if anybody has been in those website content meetings and has a link to that demo that kevin's been showing um drop it in the chat here otherwise i can go search i cannot stop sharing and go search um but so people will be able to see the, the different areas of metrics um, but they're going to be, it's going to be less like linear like this. It's going to be much more of like what Venya was saying, much more searchable and not as, um, yeah, not as just like flat on here, if that makes sense. Um, and, and last week we also talked about, and this ties in again to what Venya was saying, this um, metric URL shift. So we're no longer be linking to metrics based on their name, but we're going to give them all a number. So that in the future, if we do add them to a database, they're not going to change because we would like right now, if we change the name of a metric, it changes the URL, it breaks things, it breaks Augur, it breaks Grimoire Lab, it like messes everything up. So we're going to be uh, giving each metric a numerical ID and that's how it will be referenced on the URL. So that kind of ties into this. Um, I really wish I had that link. Let me see if it's in here anywhere from before. Um, can I get some clarification on that? Are you regularly changing the URL of a metric whenever the name changes? Yes. If a okay. name changes, which it does sometimes, not often, but enough to make it a problem, mm -hmm. um, then the URL does change. Are you doing automatic redirects to those new URLs? They, we do now, now that we have control over our, web, our own website, and we will do that as soon as we change all the um, the um, things to numbers instead of the names, and um, we'll put those redirects in place. But I think that the the num numerical system is a much more long term solution than just keep redirecting, redirecting, redirecting all the time. So that's why we were thinking of just switching totally over and redirecting for a while, and then just being done with it. Okay, um, I do agree with the idea of adding a metric to each ID and then serving it from like a CRM system on the back end, but I do want to caution against removing natural language from the URL for each metric. And the reason for that is because Google uses natural language processing in order to rank us that will heavily affect SEO. Yeah, I mean, I, I I totally get that. I totally understand. Um, I don't know that like SEO is really like a concern we we have a lot. Like, I don't I don't know that that's like it sure it should be something. Obviously, we take into consideration, but I don't know that that's like our primary um, concern. If that makes sense, it, like it I think people be. find us. You know, like I think they find us, and I think. Um, I think we're okay. Where is that stinking website? Then the one about knowledge base. What's that, Ruth? Yeah, like the link you're looking for. Is it the one about the knowledge base? Yeah, yeah, like the demo that Kevin has going. Uh, it or, you know, be... that... Let me see. Let me try to find it in the um the web content meeting should be there oh yeah i guess we could switch over there okay ruth while you do that um do we have other thoughts about this focus area thing and it will make more sense when i can visual visually show it i know I, I don't 
use words very well. So that will, <laughs> it will help to see like a picture of what, what we're talking about. I mean, that's also why we've been adding these um, in every working group, we've been working on adding context tags and keywords that will get added. So that's how people will find the metrics based on, they'll be like organized by context tag and keywords. So like in DEI, we've done that already. We've added these context tags which are sort of like focus areas if we were going to standardize the focus areas a little bit across working groups and this comes from a list so these would be kind of like focus areas that we're using now but in a more standardized way um elizabeth i put something in the chat i don't know whether i want to check that if that is what you're looking for <laughs> Yeah, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So yes, yeah, so there'll still be topic areas, um, which were kind of like focus areas, I guess, before. This is the um, this is going to be the new metrics page. Um, so you'll be able to see like, okay, here's organization. Here's all the metrics that deal with organization. And this is across working groups. So they'll no longer be like you'll, because the way we have things organized now is for us, not for the people using the metrics necessarily. So like we've we've self divided ourselves into different areas like risk and evolution, but our users may not really know where we are going to be working on a metric. So they may not know like where to look, but they are going to know, hey, I want to look at something that's going to help with my organization. Or help with like I care about governance and leadership. So give me all the metrics about governance and leadership and I don't care what working group they were in, but here's what here's where they're going to be. Yeah, Sophia, go ahead. Um, I, I, I generally, generally agree, agree with the flip to, to the user, user experience versus sort of replicating our organizational structure. I think the, the, the first reaction I have to this, I know it's not what you're asking, but realizing that now that we've condensed the view to only be the name of the metric and not the name with the brief description where we had before in this charts, that it behooves us to choose highly descriptive names of the metrics. Um, where I was looking at something, oh, I'm sorry, I'm echoing. I think my headphones to work and I guess they're not working well. Um, do I, should I try to clap or something? Is this unbearable? <laughs> Sounds like metrics. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, just thinking, like, I was looking at the organizational one, and an example is Elton Factor versus organizational diversity, and it's just sort of, like, a descriptive name versus, like, a name we pick. That, in most cases, most of our metrics are descriptive names, but if this is the default format we're going for going forward, I think it behooves us to pick descriptive metric names um, if we don't have any additional description with the metric. That's an excellent point. And I'm not sure, and that this is going to be a question I can take to the web content meeting about, can we include a little like the, the actual question that it's answering or some kind of description underneath this? Um, yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Let's just put a thing over here, here. Yeah, um, I also have um, two suggestions slash requests, wherein the release history should actually be a series of blog pages wherein each release is considered its own blog. And that'll allow us to attach a discourse post to each one individually for conversation um, below the blog. And then the second one is, can we, in addition to having the topic areas for a metrics delineation, can we repeat the card format for working groups on the homepage? Um, an answer to your question about the homepage, I think there is, yes, they're working on, they're working on that right now. It's, yeah, um, let me just see, is there something here? I don't know, there's like, um, nope. Yeah, they are, they are working on that. Um, 
there's going to be like these three, which we talked about. Let me go down here. There's going to be like these three different images on the homepage, and then there will be um, blurbs about each working group and like how to participate and quick start. For there's like a whole um, knowledge base about for newcomers right here. Um, I believe this will have the um, things like how we do work so like the working groups i believe will be under that and then the community health metrics will be all linked to all the metrics pages so there's like three different knowledge bases going on and so people will be able to kind of choose their own adventure choose their own path of like what they're coming to chaos for if they're coming to participate if they're new if they're coming to use metrics we're, we're trying to guide them in the right direction and then, um, then can you say your point again about the blog posts? I don't think I understood fully what you meant. Sure. So if we divide our release history comments into individual blog post pages, um, we can add a discourse post attached below the blog post where people can actively communicate and talk to it that will one, automatically post to the discourse forum, and second, allow di all discourse forum content to be um, SEO'd along with the blog page. And it's also not like cluttering the mainstay stagnant pages, forcing us to have to constantly rewrite them. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a great idea. Uh, if, I, if I fully understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, a uh, good question... example. Oh, go ahead. A good example is I actually did it on my own um, web page where I just have like the top four releases and then everything else is basically just its own blog post. Got you. I mean, that kind of leads into another discussion that we had last week. Was that last week, two weeks ago about the, no, where was that? Three weeks ago? about the releasing uh release manager where the hell was that uh update on release manager yeah so there's been like some some conversations about do we even have releases anymore or do we just stay on a continuous release path all the time because the actual formal releases are a whole lot of work and you know maybe it's time we just keep rolling them out whenever where they're done whenever they're done they get added we announce it End of yeah end of it. and I like that idea because it also allows us to schedule um content and release information simultaneously and mm -hmm. keep them in separate buckets so you can have a category for meeting release and you can have a category for each other individual type of content it's all coming through in one stream it all has cover images it can all be placed in cards and you can classify them in different category rows uh, which makes it way easier to integrate the content journey, the relationship journey, and the tech journey um, on a singular website, make it a lot more feasible, and also make it look like content is regularly coming out. So it's a much better continuous content stream implementation, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good idea. This is uh, all right. What other comments do we have, or questions, or concerns? And we'll bring this up again next week. Like this is an ongoing discussion, I know. So if you want to mull it over for a week and come back or add some things in Slack, um, probably I guess. Yeah. I'm just curious, curious what, what the, the, the time, time frame, frame is right now. Just um, it's a great question. I think it's close. I would guess by the end of the year, we will maybe make that switch over to the new website. Um, as far as the numerical IDs, I don't I don't know about that. That might take a little lo longer. I don't think it's they're trying to do everything at once. Um, so yeah. I think uh, so. Ruth and Shoya are working on cleaning up the community handbook part of the knowledge base and that as part of Google season of docs and that ends at the end of November. So yeah, I'm, I'm guessing probably December everything will get released at once if I had to guess. Well, that's good to know. I, I, I do use the, 
the descriptive URLs quite frequently. So I need to know to remove this from, because I basically feel like if I'm talking about a metric in a presentation and I really like that I can just source it on the bottom with community chaos dot slash metric name. Um, and so I think that's, I, I get the, 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 the that IDs are more static and referenceable from the database side, but I feel, I feel like, like that's, that's it, we, we will lose, lose that sort of the descriptive nature of sourcing in, in those sort of forms. I agree. And I also think that there are better ways to implement that, like a parameter. You can push a parameter through all URLs from a database control. So you can actually have a metric ID pushed after a URL. Yeah, so um, these are excellent points. And I just want to mention the web content meeting is where most of these have been happening, these conversations. So if y'all want to join and um, or join the Slack, um, I believe it's, what is it, WG something? WG web site, I think it is. Um, I'm afraid to like switch over because I don't want to like mess up my screen share. So that's why that's why my hesitation of like I don't know where anything else is. I don't know what's happening with any other meeting times or Slack or anything because I'm afraid to yeah switch my focus here on the sharing because I got a lot of stuff open. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, so yes, continue. We can continue these conversations there um, or here. We'll bring them back here too because it does you know affect a lot of the community. Um, so. Yeah, appreciate the feedback from everybody, definitely. So keep it coming, is what I'm saying. It's good. Um, okay, so should we move on? What time is it? Yeah, let's move on. Um, just an announcement to everyone. We cleaned up the Google project, uh, sorry, Chaos Project Google Drive. Um, the docs were kind of all over the place and um, they weren't super organized so we just kind of did some house cleaning and um the end result is if you no longer can find a document if we've messed up something or if you don't have access to something that you thought you should or used to and you don't now because uh, you know when you move stuff around in google it's like do you want to keep sharing with the same people and you try to do yes but i don't know just just putting it out there if you can't find what you need or you don't have access just let one of these people know, and we will get you what you need. Not a problem at all. Um, the next one is we put this out here last week. I was just going to bring it up again because I know we had um, just want to it's again, you know, a big change. So I want to make sure that people see this and like they want to give comments, they have an opportunity to do so. Um, we have been looking at the the um, checklist for releasing a new metric. And here's what it was. Um, this is so like when you have a metric and it's ready to go and your working group has all completed it, it's in the Google Doc, what do you do next? The next step is to open this issue in whatever working group you're in. And this issue is pretty long, as you can see, like there's a whole lot of things to check off on this list. It's a little daunting. So in the effort of just kind of streamlining things and making things a little easier um, on ourselves, uh, Matt kind of came up with this process, which is a whole lot easier. Um, and it just kind of consolidates some things. Um, yeah, so we just want to, I think he wanted to get some feedback from folks on if this is good, bad, concerns, support, like whatever y'all think about this. And again, this was the old one. Um, yeah, and it's pretty, pretty long. A lot of checks to check. And then this one is a lot slimmer, easier. I'm generally liking the simplicity of it. I think if it long as long as it has the most important things, because clearly there are less steps here. So without going through and reviewing and comparing each thing that we removed, I assume that Matt did that in a way that ensured that the most important things are still there, in which case, um, I, I mean, I think generally I'm all for more simple processes. So this looks great. I think one of the biggest changes is the translation step. 
um, which we're going to try to with the new website there's um, some translation plugins that we need to tweak and work through to make sure that they're translating things properly things like chaos and chaotic <laughs> doesn't quite translate <laughs> the way we want um, so things like that um, that we still have to work on but i think that the idea is to let the website do the heavy lifting instead of relying right now on the chinese community for instance to completely translate all the metrics and all of the the things so um, that's kind of that was i know a big change in this is that that, that step was taken out um, I don't think there were any other giant changes, like you said, Sophia, Matt just kind of consolidated things and they did a little bit smoother. So, yeah, um, if, does anybody else have any feedback on that or I'll just put. I personally it. think that the streamlined version works great. I like it a lot. All right, awesome. Um, and then it looks I guess like, oh, go ahead. Uh, one, one thing that I don't see in here, but mostly because it's, it's top of, of mind, um, within, within the risk working group recently, recently updated, updated one of the, the naming languages, languages language within our naming um, um, to be more in line with sort of consistent language, language across all of the metrics. metrics. Maybe, Maybe this is again, again things, things that we, we made this simpler, but this is another. Thing. Reference, I'm, I'm just curious with where, where I would, is that, that should be part of this process, process. like just, just to like, as a last check, check are you using consistent, consistent language? Um, but, but I don't, I don't know, know how important, important that is relative to all the things, things that were removed from this process. process. That's a great question. Um, there has also been some efforts to standardize the way we name time-based metrics as well. Yeah. Is that part of that, or is that was that different? Yeah, yeah that was, it was it was part, part of the time, time one. Was how, okay. how it came through, through. Um, and, and I was totally fine with the change. change but it was one of those things where we had to go back and change it versus like, like if we had, had known that during the release, we would have. It, it didn't change the description of the metric. metric. It was just the word that we chose. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Let's put this in here. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't want to like, like make this more complex because I think again simplicity wins in most cases. <laughs> um, um, it just might be a nice like, like if there's a separate, separate like link out to related, related resources, resources, which, which could, could be like standard naming, um, or something like that, or, or like, like how maybe later if we're all including the tags again in terms of the new website architecture and tagging framework. Um, like links, links, links to those, those sort of like standard resources for once, once you once you have the metric in place, these are sort of the final touches. touches. Um, but but we'd ra I'd rather, rather have, have those things in front of me versus, versus like having to go, go back and, and fix it or cause someone, someone like Matt to requality check everything, everything again constantly. <laughs> so if, if we, we can, can get it in front, then. Um, but yeah, yeah just, I, I, I guess, guess that's maybe the only thing I see missing, missing is like what's it doesn't, doesn't have to be in this process. It's just sort of like a supplemental resource for things like naming, tagging, and sort of the final final quality and template checks. Yeah, that's a great question, and maybe it belongs under here just as like a final, you know. And I think the the um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure, well, yes, it has been. The context tags and keywords have been added to the metrics template. So that will be the prompt to make sure people have added those in. But um, I think what you're saying might belong under here. Um, the they could go in the metrics, metrics template, template then. then. I, I think, think if, if, if those, those are in there, there like, like I, I would see, because that's when you would revise and choose your name is also in the template. Is it in the template? That's a good question. I'm in the wrong repository. I was just going to look really quick. Um, the metrics template to make sure. Is it under here? No. I never can find it. I, ever. I can never, ever, ever find it. Here it is. Oh, okay, I'm just logging out, so, so now I can't, I can't see, see anything. anything. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, yeah, so here's context text keywords. Uh, maybe we should put 
put it up here in name of metric or something like that. Or not. And that's about document for formatting. Okay, yeah, I, I could, could probably, probably go somewhere in here because this, this is basically, basically like all the resources you need to create a metric. metric. That's how yeah. I can yeah. it. And, and I think that, that would yeah. versus, versus like bogging, bogging down, down the, the, the checklist. checklist. Check yeah. Like, I, I think, think it's, it's yeah, better, it's better, better here. here. I think I agree. Um, because I think the checklist is like, okay, here's here's the steps you have to take, but also like just like a final look over, not necessarily like here are, you know, here is all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Go in the checklist. So let's say maybe it goes in, okay, let's let's add to the metric template. Does anybody want to take an action item for that? I mean, I can, I don't care. And then he is saying, if we were to evolve this into a form later, that naming convention could be checked as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a much better blog or video than it does a repository. The ultimate guide to creating a chaos metric. Yeah, that's good. That's a great idea. All right, anything else before we move on? We have three minutes left. And I think Venya has wants to talk about this part right here. So I will let her talk about that. Yeah, just a small reminder. And if you are uh, available to do it, I would really, really appreciate it if you could provide a takeaway for a random chaos cast that you would find interesting so that we can make chaos cast abridged episodes. Uh, the majority of the reason for this is because we want to repurpose those old episodes and really figure out what the meat of the value of those episodes are. And uh, it definitely sounds a lot better and comes a lot better from a community member who said this is the value of this blog than it does from us at Chaos Cast who are producing um, the content for you in the first place. So I'd really appreciate it uh, if you could just grab a random episode and then write down this interesting thing happened, here's the entry time, here's the exit time, and then I will pull all of those for you, and then we'll publish the uh, Chaos Cast Abridged episode um, elsewhere. Um, I would really appreciate it uh, if I could get some volunteers to help me do that. Is that a clarification question? So I assume that it's the abridged version is just going to be snippets from the original podcast just with, with like, like some, some little voiceover voice to connect, connect what's happening? Um, usually we don't use a voiceover. Um, we just basically connect all of them. And usually there's already a question being asked by a person. And then whatever the answer is, we distill it into about a one minute period of time, um, which usually concentrates a 40 minute episode into about a 12 minute episode. And assuming timing wise, like, like I, I could probably, probably get to one of these in about two weeks. weeks. I hope that's, that's okay in terms of like, just like a steady stream of every so often you get one to do versus, versus like, are you trying to do a bunch by a certain deadline? Um, we're trying to keep it relatively consistent, but there isn't really like a hard deadline on actually getting it on the back end. Um, Chloe and myself have basically just been going through two or three of them all in a row. And that just takes care of three weeks. Um, yeah. Do you do you have like a sheet or something where we could sign up for an episode so we're not redoing or repeating work that you've already done? Uh, great question. Um, I don't really think it's hugely necessary for us to do that because there's only currently six episodes actually done. So out of 70 episodes, uh, you don't have a lot of chance of hitting on one. And even if you did, all the episodes that are currently out were us, so it would be perfectly fine for us to replace it. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, on the YouTube channel, 
um, for socially constructed, uh, we have the list of currently out channels, if that would be uh, out videos, if that would be helpful. Um, yeah, but effectively, um, once we get enough episodes, we'll basically go through and redo this for chaos as well. All right, thank you, Venya. Thank you, Sophia, and anybody else who wants to um, help out with that, just let Venya know. And as she said, she would greatly appreciate that. So that's a good um, place for maybe a newcomer that uh, wants to get involved with chaos, not sure what to do. There you go, there's an awesome opportunity for you. You would not have to even have any kind of chaos knowledge whatsoever. So um, yeah, and we are actually out of time. So I will end the meeting here. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you this same place, same time next week. Take care, everybody. See ya.